Hi there guys, thanks for joining me on another showcase video. I haven't actually done one of these in a while. Actually, that's not true. I've done a few over the last couple of months, but I've somehow messed them up every time, deleting files and corrupting them. So hopefully this one works out. As you can see, I'm going to show you, I've just done a couple of sets for Imperial Assault, which is a Star Wars board game from Fantasy Flight Games. And uh, I've just finished a couple of sets, so I thought I'd show you what they look like. I'm pretty proud of them, so... Uh, and a good shout out to Sirastro on YouTube, go check out his channel, that's where I uh, got most of the colour schemes from. So I'll start with the big boy, uh, this is Darth Vader. Um, I'm using the rivet ward tiles just to put some scope underneath them so you can have a little themed look. But this is what he looks like, hopefully it's not too wobbly. As you can see obviously Darth Vader is mostly black. The bases underneath are from Lidgo Designs. Um, but yeah, in the UK, you can get them from Figures and Comfort. You get a pack of 20 for £3.50, which I think is pretty good value. I did a while back, I did a um, little poll on the Facebook forum in, on Board Game Geek um, just to see what would be better. Because I'm a sort of standard board game miniature painter where I like to do, you know, flock bases and stuff, something like this, you know, with texture bases. So I was going to do that with these figures as well. But I put up a post to see what guys thought, and uh, the clear see-through bases was one of the options that came out. And I tried it out, and uh, I really like it. Uh, it comes through nicely. I mean, uh, obviously this is just a, a dusty desert sort of board. But when you're playing on the Star Wars actual boards, they got lots of, you know, details on the board themselves. And they shine through so they don't detract from the board, which is would be a shame, obviously, if you're covering up all the detail. Um, I did a little bit of a light, ooh, light source. On, I don't know if you can see that. The light's not great here where I'm filming on from the lightsaber. Uh, yeah, so that's Darth Vader. I've done obviously two sets, that's why there's two of them. So we'll move on to a different one. Right, these are the Royal Guard and the Royal Guard Champion. The Royal Guard Champion doesn't actually come in the box. He is a, a expansion blister. Um, but the Royal Guard, you get four in a box. I've made a subtle change to them because during the game you can have either elite versions or normal versions. So these four here have just red gloves. They're the normal versions. And then the elite versions would be the ones with the black gloves like that. Obviously there's not a lot different about them. You, they're just red. You give them a bit of highlights over the red and stuff like that. And then the Royal Guard Champion has a lot more black to it. Then you've got this big double-handed blade in the front here. Yes, you guys who are Star Wars fans will hate me for not knowing all the weapons and stuff. But uh, I'm just a painter and a gamer. So that's a bit of a look. Obviously all the bases are still with the acrylic. The Royal Guard were actually a little tougher to do um, because they, with, the, with the, the sort of flowing cloaks, it's sort of a massive surface to clip through. So taking them off the bases was a, a lot tougher than it may look. Um, the guys like these with just the just the feet touching the base were a lot easier because you can literally just slide a blade through them and clip them off. Um, so that's the Royal Guard. Let's go on to the next. Imp these are the Imperial Officers. Um, same again. They come three in a box. Uh, let's zoom. Focusing in properly. There we go. You see the two in the middle. I did them with red belts as opposed to the others with black belts to give them the elite status. Um, so when you're in game, if you need to differentiate between the normals and the elites, you can use those two as elites, and then the others as red, as normal. Sorry. Um, yeah, pretty good figures. I mean, obviously very standard, just imperial officer uniform. A little bit of color on the badges to give them a metal look. Um, these guys on the cards show that they have black gloves on, but I wanted to break up the color a bit, so I painted their hands as gloveless, if you like. Thought it would be better. There you go. So that's the Imperial officers. Let's have a look at some stormtroopers. Alright, so these are the stormtroopers. Obviously, keep in mind, these are two boxes worth. Not They don't all come out of one box. So I don't think you're going to get all these stormtroopers in one box. But I like showing them as the big cluster of stormtroopers. As you can see, they're predominantly white, which, as anyone knows who does any painting, are a nightmare to paint. 
but I think they came out all right. Um, they look great with the Litka bases underneath. I've also differentiated them into three squads because, again, this one is not, not so much important that you need elite or um, normal versions, although that happens in the game. But you obviously, you might have two different squads of Stormtroopers on the board and you want to mix them up. So what I've done is just subtly added, like this squad has a blue stripe on their shoulder pad, where this one has a yellow stripe, and this one has a red stripe. Uh, I did a set before this actually, and uh, I did, instead of yellow, I did blue, green and red. But the blue and green were very similar. Um, like if you looked at them quickly, you wouldn't maybe tell immediately which two they were. So I changed the green to yellow. Which I think works fine. Um, I've done it on both shoulder pads, so you can obviously quickly see. But it's just that one stripe down the side, so it makes it very subtle, but easy enough to see. And obviously, they are really iconic characters from Star Wars, so it's nice to see a bunch of them rushing around on the decks. There you go, Stormtroopers. Let's see, uh, we'll maybe look at the engineers next. As you can see, these are the engineers. Um, they've got these big quad cannon type things going on. Now, these were actually a lot tougher to get off the bases than you can imagine. I mean, you've got all this wiring and that ammo box on the floor with the feet. And you didn't want to clip off any of the wiring by accident. So they were a lot tougher to get off. Um, also, also uh, same sort of principle. These They only get two per box. So I've done one per box. Um, with a red cabling to represent the elite one and one with a yellow uh, black cabling to make the generic normal one and oh, as you can see they're also predominantly white and black so that's them they're also quite strong in the game I mean uh, if you want to check out a little bit of an overview of the game you can check out um, our overview we did a video for that I'll try and put a link there maybe to show you you can go click on that to have a look Right, what should we have a look at next? Uh, maybe the Trandoshans. So these are the Trandoshans. Um, you get four per box. Uh, what I've done with these though, um, because you get you you get a little token in the in one of the base games for Boshk, the um, one of the tr character Trandoshans. But then generally the rest are just generic. So what I've done is I've made for the elite version I've made these two colours a yellow and red one. So you can have a elite versions with just these two or two normals which are just these two which are the same color so they work pretty well that way but also if you want to represent Bosch as rather than the um, token you can use this guy right here which I painted up obviously the way he is depicted uh, these were quite interesting to paint actually uh, little lizard men dudes quite nice I like the Sort of adding all the little details of the teeth and gave them sort of you know lizardy eyes. I know you can't really tell by my poor photography skills, um, but that's really cool. I did on the previous set. I did their backpacks a greyish color, uh, whereas this one I went for a brown color instead, just to mix it up a bit. I don't know. It seemed like uh, they were blending in too much with the, the imperial stuff, so I wanted them to stand out a bit. Whereas these guys, obviously. When you think of they had grey backpacks with their sort of imperial looking colours fatigues. So I'll sort of change it up a bit. But yeah, so that's the Trandoshans. Um, ah, let's do the Nexus next. These are the Nexu cats. These are probably my favourite thing to paint out of this set. They're great fun to paint. Uh, loads of good detail, um, especially if you add in with the stripes and stuff. Uh, the eyes came out brilliantly. Oh man, that's pretty, I can't, no, a terrible camera, who wants to buy me a new camera? Um, but yeah, so they came out really, really cool. Uh, is that, no, oh, there's a mark in there. So really good detail. Um, there's obviously two of them. They, unfortunately, I didn't really come up with a clever way of making marking out which one's elites or not, but I'm sure it wouldn't matter too much. I mean, there's only two per box. Yeah, that's a nice, good-looking view of them. This is obviously the second and third set I painted. The first set, I made a slightly lighter version of them. These ones, I made a small, more of a dusty effect over the top of them to make them a little more dirtier. But I really like them. I think they're great. They look fantastic miniatures, these. Uh, I'm really looking forward to painting up. I think at the end of the year, they got the, those big 
shaggy cows. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. Uh, I'm looking forward to painting one of those. This is the droid part of the, the force. Uh, the two in the front here, IG-88. Um, they are an expansion as well. They don't come in the base game. I mean, there's not really much you can do with the droid, so you won't be able to tell from the way I'm filming in this light. But there's lots of shading and different rusting and um, oil effects on the miniatures themselves to give them a little more depth. Um, obviously the glowing eyes. So that's what I did with them. Um, the droids at the back. I did the same similar similar thing to what I did with the uh, stormtroopers to sort of tie them in. You've got a red one, a yellow one, and a blue one. Um, I didn't really need to do that. So I mean, I could have just kept them all the same color because I don't think it makes that much of a difference. But I thought it was just a nice little sort of tie in with the stormtroopers to have them sort of linked to a squad, if you like. Um, so that worked quite well. I will notice that this is I've done three of these sets now. And every time I've opened one of these sets, these guys are always broken off the bases in the base box set. Um, so there's a thought to keep in note. Uh, it's pretty easy to glue back, but it made it a lot simpler for me to change them over to these bases. Because I didn't have to clip them off. <laughs> there you go. Those are the droids. Uh, what do we have left We're on the Imperial side? Ah, the big walkers. Let's do them. Right, so these are the walkers. I'm not going to say which one it is because I'll probably get it wrong. Is it the ATST? Something like that. <laughs> you guys are going to hate me for this. But uh, these are the ones you get in the box. Um, they're the normal standard ones. I've, I like when I do vehicles and walkers and things like that. I like to make them really dirty and sort of gringy. So uh, that's what I've done with these. I've got the, I don't know if you can see them back there. I've got a, like a rust effect on the back of the engines and I've got a bit of weathering going on, like, make it look like they've been walking around, you know, out in the rain, maybe on Endor, you know, through the forest and stuff, that's why their feet are so muddy, got lots of weathering going on, just to give it a bit more depth and detail as well, otherwise they're just standard grey sort of miniatures with a bit of gun placements around, so that's what they do, uh, I'll tell you what, one thing, these are an absolute nightmare to take off the bases, because... You won't be able to tell because they're connected in now, but those things there connect, disconnect from these, and these are actually built into the base. So I had to literally clip around it and then file it and scalp it down. Whoa, it took me ages. I think my fingers turned to jelly before they finished them. Obviously, the gun turrets can move. Uh, so those are the normal walkers, and this one, yeah, this is General Weiss, which is one of the um, expansion packs. He comes with obviously a different different guns and the dude on top. Um, you might see sticking out the top because this is removable and it actually comes with options to change them into one of those if you really want to. Um, but as you can see, I've done the same sort of with him. So he's also been walking around on the moon of Endor in the mud and rain. So he's got lots of grime, lots of rust, dirty, still in the field, haven't got a chance to go back to base yet to clean up their walkers. So that's what they look. I know some people might not like them so dirty, but I just think it brings a lot more detail and depth to a miniature when, especially on a vehicle, when there's not a lot you can do. It just adds a bit more. I like it. I think these were really good fun to paint as well because they use a different technique. You know, when you're doing sort of standard miniatures like this, you're just doing shading and highlighting and that sort of thing. Where with the weathering, you use a different technique. You know, with the dabbing of the cloth and dry brushing, things like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that that is all the Imperial stuff, I think. Uh, so let's do some Rebel characters. Should we start with? Should we do them all? Oh no, we'll do the troopers first. Let's do them. So these are the Rebel saboteurs. Um, I have no idea where these, who these are, or what they are. So literally, my only source material was just to look it up on the internet to find out what color schemes they are and that sort of thing. But I think they came out alright. Crazy little blue bobblehead aliens um, with all their camos and fatigues. Pretty interesting. Um, not much really I can say about them. They were pretty simple, basic trooper. They're an expansion pack, by the way, so this thing doesn't, doesn't, doesn't come in the base box either. Um, the expansion packs are roughly around about eight or nine quid each, somewhere around there. Uh, so these are the Rebel Saboteurs. We'll do some Rebel Troopers next. 
These are the Rebel Troopers. Um, they come three to a blister, as they're not in the base set either. Um, they were actually quite interesting to paint. I love the way the color scheme I used for their khakis on their pants or trousers. Um, they were really good. I think I like the okay. I've been told I should gloss up the helmets, uh, which I'll take into consideration and get that done. Uh, but yeah, these are pretty decent figures. Not bad. Um, obviously, they're all one pose, but you don't really need. It's not a, an army building game. It's a skirmish board game, so you only need a few of them. There's also the version where you can make an army to do a two v two, a one v one sort of, um, just a straight up fight. Uh, I don't even think you'd need many there as well. So that's them. And then not a lot of options to do with them, so I just keep them standard. Well, there you go. Let's do some characters. So these are the iconic Han Solo and Chewbacca. Um, they are also separate blisters. They don't come together, um, but <clears throat> they're pretty good figures. I'm not sure. I haven't played Imperial Assault that much, so I'm not sure how relevant they are to the actual campaign. Um, but miniatures are always better than tokens, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, so they were also pretty good fun to take. The Wookiee was actually interesting to paint because obviously, um, based on Chewbacca, he has a lot of darker shading in his fur, which unfortunately you can't see. Um, so I had to darken certain areas and lighten certain areas, which was interesting, nice technique to use. Uh, with Han Solo, I just went with his general clothing, but it was actually a pretty good figure of him. Um, <coughs> excuse me. He actually looks a lot like Han Solo when he's painted, which is pretty cool. Um, so those are those two. Uh, shall we do Luke next? So this is Luke Skywalker. Uh, he comes in the base set. He's actually, him and Darth Vader are technically expansions for the base set. But they come in the base set, so I'm not really sure if, if you can class that as an expansion, even though they call it that. Um, he's a pretty good figure. Um, nice to paint. Lots of detail. I <laughs> I think the, the person who played it, Mark Hamill, um, in Star Wars, I love Mark Hamill, especially when he was in the Jane Silent Bob movie as Cockknocker. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, pretty good figure. Not a lot I can say about that. He, I'm not even sure how use, usable he is in the base game because he's not part of the actual heroes you choose to play, uh, which is what I'm going to do next, the heroes. Um, but again, miniatures are better than tokens in my opinion. I love having miniatures and cool looking stuff on the board. Anything that enhances the thematic vision of it is always better in my opinion. So that's Luke. Let's do the heroes. We'll do them all in one go. I think that'll be it. So these are all the heroes from the base set. Um, give you a quick scan. This is Gideon Argus. He's uh, a valiant commander. Old dude in the squad. It's not bad. Uh, next to him we have Fen Cygnus. A basic hardened veteran trooper. He's quite cool. I like this miniature. Reminds me of the Imperial Guard from 40k. Uh, one of the sort of detachments from there. I like him. But I think my favourite one out of the heroes is this goat looking guy, Mac Eshkare. Um I also like the colour scheme because green is one of my favourite colours. So that works pretty cool. And also he's an interesting looking alien interesting abilities so I like him um, then next to him we have Dihala Pasal now if you think I'm doing really well on the names and uh, and I'm proving what a cool geek I am it's not actually as impressive as it sounds because I couldn't remember any of their names so I had to get out the cards out of the box and put them here in front of me so while I'm moving along the camera I'm reading them off the card um, but obviously she's got a lightsaber, she's got a blue lightsaber. The first time I did it, I did a little more uh, light sourcing on the coat. But it didn't look quite as good as I liked. I would have liked, so I did a very thin one on this time. I know you can't see it. Um, and, and then put a little more emphasis on highlighting the cloak to give it a more of a light. Um, what was interesting about this miniature as well is like you can see the bandages around her skin and stuff like that. 
they're not actually as easily defined as you might think. You can basically just choose wherever you want to make them uh, and then put the skin in between, which is fine. Uh, but yeah, she was pretty cool. Uh, then next to her is Jin Odan. Little sly smuggler. Not a bad figure. One of the females in the group. She was actually really easy to paint. Uh, you just wanted to focus a little more on the jacket. Because that's the standout point for the orange. And then finally we have Garkin. One of the, the other Wookiees. He I made based on the fact that on his sheet his fur is very light. I made his fur very light. So compared to um the the other Wookiee um Chewbacca was a head like darker splashes in between. This guy is obviously a lot lighter. Although it is quite funny, I don't know if you'll be able to see when I after I did his teeth, it looks like he's grinning, which is quite amusing. <laughs> Kind of eerie as well when you see him just grinning before he's about to smash you with that massive axe of his. It's quite funny. So there you go. Those are all the heroes or villains, depending on your perspective. Uh, that's all the figures I've done so far for Imperial Assault. Uh, here's a quick overview shot. It's taken me a little bit of time to do this. But, just as I finished these, Fantasy Flight released a few more expansions. One, another big box expansion with um, Boba Fett on the cover, actually, because he's not actually in the box. He's just a token. Uh, but R2, D2, and some other Stormtroopers and things have been released as well. And they'll be coming to me this weekend, uh, where I'll start working on them. But in the meantime, before I finish them off, I might be working on one of the other projects I'm working on is... I thought I'd paint up some of my Rivet War stuff. So this is how far I've gotten so far. I really like Rivet Wars. I love this sort of weird looking, interesting looking guys with all the interesting vehicles and stuff. But anyway, that's what I'm working on in the meantime before the next Imperial Assault wave hits me. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please leave some comments below. And please feel free to tell me what a terrible Star Wars geek I am. <laughs> And uh, I hope you learned some inspiration out of some of the miniatures that I've done. And maybe do your, own, do your own. And if you have done your own, please feel free to link them in below so I can go check them out. Uh, maybe give me some ideas for another set I might do in the future. And uh, thanks for watching.